Okay, more smiles. Hi, I'm Lauren Kennedy and welcome to episode 93 of Art This Week. This week we visit Conduit Gallery and speak with artist Robert Jessup about his exhibition of new works. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm Lauren Kennedy. I'm here with Art This Week at Conduit Gallery, speaking with Robert Jessup about his show opening up this weekend. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for uh, interviewing me. Oh, we're really excited about it. The show looks great. Um, I kind of thought we would just start by talking about this particular body of work and where this is coming from from you and within your practice. Sure. Um, well, my work, people who know my work have, uh, know that it's constantly been evolving, sort of changing, going through different periods, although I never really think of them as, or intend them to do that, it just sort of happens. But specifically, I think this work, which is very new, um, it sort of has its, its roots in work that I started when I came back from a trip to Europe two years ago. And I came back very, very um, charged up, wanting to change what I was doing, wanting to reinvigorate what I was doing. Um, previous to that, my work had been pursuing what I called fictional realism. Um, I was using realist tropes to make my imaginary pictures, okay. which I suppose another thing to explain is that one thing that's always been consistent is that um, I've always been a picture maker. Okay. So I just make things up. That's what I like to do, is just make things up. Of course, the question is how you make them up. You mm -hmm. know? But anyway, uh, after coming back from Europe, I just had this desire to become more aggressive, more uh, ambitious, more um, subversive. And I started doing some pictures I called creature paintings. And so the figures that I was inventing started to become these strange, sort of surreal hybrid. They started off sort of strange and cute and then kind of got bigger and stranger and not so cute. Um, anyway, sometime in the past year, there was this point where the major change that happened is that I exchanged what I call a furious description for a furious plasticity. And at some point, uh, it was probably around that time I started doing the drawings. Okay. And um, I've always done drawings, and the drawings are in this show, um, many of them. Um, and a preferred medium for the drawing is just the simple compressed charcoal eraser. Mm -hmm. Uh, the thing that was different about these drawings when I started doing them is that I decided that um, I would push them farther than I'd ever pushed anything before in terms of rejecting, erasing, having no idea what they were supposed to be and then just staying with it a long time until out of a final act of desperation something would, I would, I would make something, something would happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they really just began informing all of the way I was making images from that point on. They started around April and they were just, they remain a very continuous practice for me right now. Do you typically show drawings or are you primarily? I, in the past I have shown drawings, I've had mm -hmm. shows of drawings. Um, for most of the time in my career, see because I'm so, my activities involve, uh, involved with inventing imagery. Mm -hmm. And so my energies go into that invention. And so usually when I'm making paintings, they consume all that energy. There's no point in doing a drawing. Sure. You know? But I've done drawings in the past when there's been a desire to have works on paper to accompany paintings. Mm -hmm. But this has been a really different time. This has been uh, a really self-sustaining um, area of investigation with these drawings. And, and, and the difference really is that I've just become much more ruthless in terms of how I push them and push them around and not settling for things and just, yeah, just not settling. And um, they began influencing the paintings, um, but a, a big break came for this body of work, for these, these paintings came probably just this last fall when I decided in the paintings that they should be made like the drawings. Not in the sense that they should necessarily look like the drawings, mm -hmm. but they should be made like the drawings, which meant that I had to be all in, as it were. Sure. I had to get into the process of throwing this paint around and pushing it around before I had any idea what it was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. um, so the paintings became suddenly just much wetter, much looser, much, they, they've just become, um, kind of high, wi high wire acts for me in making them. I mean, I don't know if that comes across when you see them, but I mean, for me in the making of them, not knowing what they were supposed to look like. And that's, that's a very important thing going into it for me. Mm -hmm. And I tell myself that. I like the word that you used, ruthless, because looking at the 
especially looking at the drawings, but also looking at the paintings, you do pick up on that looseness, and there's there's almost a fury to it. And it well, I like yeah, fury. There is a fury to it. Yeah. And it creates a very powerful image, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, it, they've been very exciting for me to do. They've been very uh, nerve-wracking. I mean, it's uh, this paint. Actually, this painting right here was one of the first ones where I really kind of decided I'd put all my chips on the table. And how and, do you feel about the product? Well, it was enormously exciting. And it was enormously scary. And not knowing, well, what am I going to do with this? And what kind of an Im image, image is this going to be? And how do I make this come together? And of course, that's always the issue. It's like, how do you make it come together? Um, and part of it is that, you know, it can't be, it can't be a, a result of craft. <laughs> In fact, it's almost more like a boxing match. And it's like any, any stroke, any piece of paint that's there has to be a punch that landed well. So it does. And if it doesn't land well, then you take it out or you scrape it out or you move it somewhere else. And so I guess the goal is, and I say this I guess, uh, is that the resulting painting, if it, if it ends up being completed, what you're seeing are all the punches that landed, you know? Which I think produces, <laughs> it somehow feels very deliberate. The image as a whole feels very deliberate and very um, confident, I guess. Even in the looseness. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, I think for it to settle, to be considered close, it's got to get there. But I think um, a lot of these resolutions really grow out of a whole lot of desperation. desperation. <laughs> and, and, okay. and in these, this work, I'm really trying to push myself to that, to that uh, really desperate point where I'm flailing, I'm slugging away at it, I'm scraping out, I'm changing my mind, I'm sitting there, I'm saying, this looks terrible. and push myself until something happens, really something on its own kind of tells myself, okay, I'm going to follow that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's really what the show represents in terms of the way I'm working. So when you sit down to, to start a piece, whether it be a drawing or a painting, do you have a, a vague idea of, um, of where you want to start? I mean, is there something that, uh, that car is carrying through each piece as, as a whole? Or, I know well, that you no, said you're an image maker. Pri primarily, I would say no. Okay. I mean, to really, the way I work now, the way it's been going, is I put a piece of paper up, like the drawings. Mm -hmm. And the drawings are very, in a way, similar to the paintings. But I put a piece of paper up, and I'll go up to it. And as capriciously and mindlessly as I possibly can, I will make some sort of series of marks. I will just make marks. I'll sit, and then I'll go sit down, and I'll look at it. And I'll think about it, and then I'll go back up, and I'll capriciously make a whole bunch of other marks and lines and movements, and and it's all drawing for me is very much a dance and it's mm -hmm. choreography. But then I'll make those lines, and I'll make this stuff there, and I'll go sit down and I'll look at it some more. Then I'll go in and I'll race it, so they and each I'll very push much it have around. A life of their own. And it and it goes on until I build a whole big mess. And at some point in the drawing, then I'll start saying, okay, let's let's see if this turns into something. So I'll go one direction. And I'll sit and I'll look at that and I'll say, that's a dumb direction. So then I'll change it and I'll erase it and I'll push it around. And a lot of times in this work, I'll have three, four, five, six different sort of imagistic ideas starting to compete with each other. And I usually reject those too. And so I erase them. The, the drawings have so much erasing going on. Mm -hmm. the, the thing I really like about this medium of the compressed charcoal is you can't really erase it. There's always a, a faint There's mark. always this faint ghost. And uh, what I can do is I can deselect or I can select. And so as I go along and eventually I find that something that is surprising to me that looks vital and something I suppose new, then I can select that and I can select those structures and I can select those rhythms. But that's, that's very much how it is. I, I push the stuff around and I'm trying to be as ruthless as I can be in terms of like what it is I'm going to settle for. And they've been surprising, you know, the drawing, like all my work, and especially this work, it has its own evolution. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of stylizations that occur in the imagery and the figures is surprising to me. I didn't set out to make those. And one of the things I'm worrying about right now is that having kind of created, it started to create another universe of images. And I don't want to go into the paintings thinking that, oh, yeah, now I've got to make that character again. Even though the characters reappear, but I don't, I reappear, I don't want to start off thinking, Oh, let's do him. Right. I mean, I will do him or whatever the character is, whether it's myself or it's my son or my wife, because it's growing out of it. There's some sort of internal imperative that asserts itself, and then I'll follow that. But, uh, but it's not deliberate narrative throughout 
Well, I mean, I, you know, and this links to the way I've always worked, though. I've always, even when I was more deliberate, and I think in earlier times when um, I think I had invented a craft and I was actually sort of knowing what I was going to do more, I've mm -hmm. always made my stories up as I went along. I very much believe in that process. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have to, it should be a discovery. And these works are discoveries. They're, they're big discoveries. How far, you know, the question for me is, is that I don't know how far narratively these things can go. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much of the battle is just getting the form to make any kind of imagistic sense. Mm -hmm. And that may be enough. But, you know, there, there definitely are some narrative ideas that underpin most of these paintings. Um, I've always loved doing heads, faces. They're sort of like the core. It's like the basic elemental thing. You know, you make a picture, make a, make a face, make a person. How do you mm -hmm. do that? You know, and that's always been a central question. Uh, and these characters, for instance, the big painting back here, mm -hmm. Three Generations, you know, it, was, it had to do with my son, myself, and my, my, my dead father. And the idea of these three generations of Jessops who share the same DNA, share the same features. And mm -hmm. um, in making this stuff, I think, you know, I'm thinking along the way about how as I'm performing these marks that make this image of the head, I'm thinking of the being of the person, and I'm thinking, how do these beings intersect? How can I deal with the idea of psychologies interpenetrating? And of course, in this kind of work, in a drawing or a painting, you can do whatever you want. Sure. You know, and I'm not, and that's one nice thing. I'm, I, I left off the notion of a kind of realist trope or a descriptive trope because I. Yeah, this I can I can do anything. I can I can make these images interpenetrate. I can make two people share the same mouth or the same eyes or mm -hmm. it frees yourself up. And so that, much. that's that's fascinating to me. So I don't I don't know how far where this will all go, but um, I mean those are some of the ideas that are there. It's also important to me that I know they look very abstract in a lot of ways they have a lot in common with you know kind of an abstract expressionist um, way of painting. Mm -hmm. But it's very important for me that, that they have, they ultimately come around to some subject somewhere or another. There's some focal point. It, it has to arrive at that. And I think sure. that, the, that the, that imagistic closure is, is, is very, very important for tying these together, for, for making some, also making some sort of sense of all this furious activity. Maybe it's just that they butt up against each other or they contrast with each other or they pull at each other. But I, I think that um, that's important. And, that, and a big part of the surprise is just, how is this head going to be made? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how is this face made? How is this landscape made? How is this sky? How is any of it made and still kind of become an image? And so, but having that um, that need to somehow close it in logistically, I think, is very, very important for what I'm doing in the work. Great. Um, well, one random question that I have then is because you said that. You came back from a trip to Europe, and that's kind of what started this this frenzy for you and produces yeah. this body yeah. of work. Is there something that you saw in Europe? Was there an experience you think that led you to this moment in your career? Well, yeah, I, you know, going to Europe, and I, I mean, for years I've been very, very, um, very much influenced by Baroque painting, mm -hmm. and so that's really what I wanted to look at very, very closely. But you know, what was surprising to me is, is you know, for instance in Madrid at the Prado, which was my favorite museum. Um, the experience of the Bosch paintings, Hieronymus, Hieronymus Bosch paintings, Velazquez, who I really wanted to go over and study again close up, but then the black paintings of Goya. Mm -hmm. And I think the black paintings of Goya, I, I wasn't, I hadn't gone over intending to be so moved by them as I was. And I was just, they were so, they were so furious. They were the product of such rage, and they were the. Here's here was an artist who made these in his house for no one but himself, and his, and they were just so powerful. I was really moved by that. And then you know Barcelona, the Miros, uh, Gaudi, the whole sense of, you know Miro saying very early in his career saying my aim is to assassinate painting, which is funny because Miro is such a sweet artist, you know? Right, his work's very playful. But it's very playful, <laughs> but there is, there's that statement, I'm going to assassinate painting, and there's the whole spirit of that. I think I just came back with a desire to like, just try to kick things up a notch. Um, came back charged. Yeah, I came, came back really charged, and, and it's been an interesting journey. Um, the works that I started to do when I came back, 
I don't know. I mean, if we had them up here, I don't know if you would, it would, they would look in a way very different. But there is something that ties them together, that does, ties them together, the desire to subvert, to push, to be furious, to be angry, um, to try to make something that is unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing is just in this work, of which has happened so recently, is the way I'm painting and the, I think the kind of risks I'm taking in terms of how you make a painting, I think. This is fantastic. Thank you so much for well, speaking thank you. with us. This is great. Thank you. We want to thank Robert Jessup for speaking with us. The exhibition is up through March 26, 2011. More information on him can be found at robertjessup.com. More information on the exhibition and the gallery can be found at conduitgallery.com. We also want to thank Nancy and Danette for letting us film in the gallery. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. Thank you.